Okay, it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time to open the mold. Now, we know it's time because the injection tubes are solid. We crack them and they snap, and we know that the vent is cured. So we're, we as well can confirm that by there having been a warming or an exothermic reaction giving warmth to the mold throughout, and the mold's ready to open now. So we're going to disconnect our vacuum source uh, here at the catch pot. So we're going to, the regulated air, the regulated vacuum, we're going to shut that off. Don, you help us with that? Okay. So we've disconnected the vacuum at the catch pot. In this case, we just set our tube down. And we're going to remove our vent tube. That simply pulls out. Our catch pot tube simply pulls out. And our catch pot. Now, mind you, again, we have some resin in the pot, uh, more so than we wish, because we can refine that recipe and cut that down. There's no reason. I just wanted to be certain that you could see some flowing through the tube in this demonstration, but certainly we could pull probably 600 grams out. Remember, we put in 4.9 kilograms. We could set that at 4.3, 4.35, and we would have fine parts and save this resin here. But again, that would be similar to what would happen if we were running manually. The operator would just overfill the pot, and that's unnecessary, and we can prevent that running with the proper recipe. Next, what we'll do is we'll remove the injection tubes, one on each side. Down, if you like, you give me a hand on the one on that side. They just pop right out. And if you could grab an airline, and we'll just give it a little release here. Take our clamps loose. We do still have the vacuum on on the flange. Kind of holds the flange down and helps us get a release from the part cavity itself. Now, we're just giving it a shot of air in there. You don't want to balloon the mold. You could actually crack the mold. So we just give it a, a bit of relief. And with that, we'll remove now the flange vacuum, the regulated flange there, the yellow line. That's our full vacuum line holding the, the mold set together. So we'll disconnect that. And you see we released that vacuum there. Now, if you could, Don, give me a hand, we'll lift that off, and we'll set this down. Now, there's your molded part surface. Remember, we had green resin. We got white gel dope below this. Remember, again, the, the finish of the product against the mold surface we put in first. Remember, Don's spraying the gel coat. So now we've got the finished molded backside. This would be, if we were hand laid up, it would, this would be all rough. See how smooth, and that's the beauty of closed molding we get two smooth finished sides. Now if we had parts fitting together, they fit without grinding and fitting and, and all that goes with that. That's the beauty of closed molding. Also, predictable laminate thickness. Here I'm talking about refining what little bit's going in the catch pot. Historically, we've been chopping this, spraying it in all different thicknesses and sorts. Here we would have precise laminate thickness throughout with two finished smooth sides. This is the back side and that's as good as often we see on the A side of some open mold parts. So we'll go ahead and relieve this from the, the molded surface. Now it is still a bit warm, not appreciable, it's, uh, but warm. It has a, a sensation of warmth to it. Go ahead and... Now we are kind of pushing this for the, the demonstration. We, we might just want to let it cool on that upper. And often that's done in production is to set for a moment and, and let it uh, just kind of cool. Because we, we didn't certainly have the catalyst turned up any. And we, we've got a little bit of, not, not on part, but you can see this. Just some of it here is just a little bit wet yet because we're trying to open this quickly. But so this is all cured. I mean, you can't put your nail in. It's not an issue there. It's just we don't want to uh, pull it off prematurely. And often, then, you check this by temperature. You let it exotherm and then cool down to a given number of degrees and then open the mold. But you know, this isn't production refined in this demonstration. It's to show the methodology. But I think we should wait just a minute before we go ahead and pop that. If you plan to use a wedge, we could get that ready here a bit. Uh, whatever, we'll be right back for it. We're just going to let this sit for a minute so as we don't open it up prematurely. I want it to be fully solid and completely cured. I want to pop it while it's green, as it were. So hold on just a minute. We'll be right back.
okay, as we did, we <laughs> took a little extra precaution. We, you know, you go through these demos and you don't want anything to go wrong, and, and we are trying to rush and open it quickly. So we've gone ahead and let it uh, cure out. It's been about five minutes since we were uh, talking to you earlier, and we've even worked on loosening it up here. It's just we want, we're probably, as I say, about five minutes short, but Don, if you would, grab a wedge and let's uh, finish getting it out of the way out. Uh, let's work, work around it. Now these are just plastic wedges. They don't hurt the mold surface. It's coming up nicely now, actually. It's already loose down here. Let's see if you can get, get it up high enough, get your fingers under it. These, ah, there you go. And you gotta watch the static. Okay, and there we are with our white gel coat, finished surface, green resin so we could see it flow, but we see the smooth backside, smooth front, and you have a finished sink basin. Can't get easier than that. All you need is mold and the infuser PRG. Thanks for coming.